Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning about slope. Um, your essential question for today is why can the slope of a line be undefined? Okay, so for our first, um, it just says just to start defining what slope is. Um, so the first thing, the constant rate of change between points on a line. Slope is also a ratio of the rise to the run of a line. Slope is also known as the variable of m. So we have a couple different slopes here. Um, so I want you guys to make sure that you're drawing at least just the line of this on your notes. Um, so for our um, slope here, this is like he's skiing uphill or he's walking uphill. So this is a positive slope. Um, this little penguin is now skiing downhill. So that means that it is a negative slope. The skiing straight across, so he's not going uphill, downhill, or anything, so this actually has a zero slope. He's still able to be walking and stuff, but um, he's not going uphill or downhill. And this one, the reason why he's saying yeek, because we can't actually do this, um, you'd be dead if you did this, so this is actually undefined. Okay, so that's just a quick review of what kind of slopes we're looking at. Um, in order to find the slope here, um, you're given a graph. Your, remember your variable m right there always represents the slope. And then rise is your vertical change, the y values. And then the run, so let's actually say y there. And then it's your run is always the horizontal change, the x-axis. Okay. So for example, if we look at this one, we're going to see that we have our rise. We just want to find our slope for this one. So we're going to start at a nice point, a nice point meaning that it's actually going through the graph between two nice, uh, like on an actual axis there, like not through a half point like over here somewhere. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys that, that's what I mean by a nice point. So I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to count how many I'm going up in this case. And I'm going to go up, this point actually has points for me, so I'm going to, or this graph has points for me, so I'm actually going to go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm going to mark that here and then mark it here. And then I'm going to go over to get to that point. So I have to count how many. I have to go one, two, three, and then four. Okay, so then that was four to the right and four up. Since we went up and to the right, those are both positives. So I went seven over four. You always want to simplify your fraction if you can. In this case, I don't have a number that goes into both seven and four. So my slope is only seven fourths. We're going to go over a couple more examples just to get you guys familiar with finding the slope from a graph. So again, I give you guys the points. If I don't give you the points, just look for an actual, um, like I said, where it crosses between those values right there. Okay, so um, just so you're not on an actual half point. Okay, so from this case, this is a point though where it wants me to start. So I'm going to start from here. And I can either go over to the right first or I can go down. I like doing the rise over run though because rise means you're going to always go up or down first. So I'm going to do up or down first. And I'm going to try and get to this point here. So I'm going to go down one, two, three. And then that means I went down so it's a negative three. Now I'm going to go over to the right. If you're going in the right direction it's going to be positive. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So that was actually nine. Let me double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, okay. So my rise was the negative three over the nine. See, we actually, we actually have a number in common here. So three actually is in common. So three goes into three one time, so that negative's gonna stay there. And then three goes into nine three times. So your slope for this one's actually m equals negative one third. Okay, we're gonna do one more. So. We're going to go ahead and find the slope from here up to here, or you can start at either point. Um, I want to show you actually starting from this point, still it doesn't matter, I'll start from this one. Okay, I'm going to start from the highest point. I'm going to go down because that's your rise over run, so rise, you want to do up or down first. So one, two, three, four, five. I went down five. I'm also going to go left, one, two, three. So I went left three. So let's actually, if you're going, let's write this down, left and down, L and D, this means you have a negative value. If you go right and up, that means you have a positive value. 
So since I went down, I had a negative 5, and then since I went left, I had a negative. But since, if we look at this graph, this actually is a positive graph, though. Well, good thing we actually made sure we did our slope right, because a negative divided by a negative is actually a positive. So even if you started from this point right here, you guys, you would have gotten a positive 3 and a positive 5. So you can go from either point. Okay, um, some other special little cases that we actually have here um, that you want to be careful with is this, these horizontal lines. So I have a horizontal line here that's going, oh, wrong line, that's going through right here. So if I try and count from one point to the other, I see that I, um, I actually, you guys go rise over run. So did I go up or down to get to these two points? I actually did not. I went, I moved zero. So then how many did I move over? I only moved over one to get to that point. Well, you can have zero divided by a number that actually equals zero. If you look at this graph, we have a zero slope. That's what we're supposed to have. For this one, we have, you can probably just look at what this thing is actually gonna be. I wanna show you why it is undefined though. So from going from this point down to this point, so that I do actually have a rise or a run, or sorry, a rise or I can either go up or down. So I have a, I've gone down one, two, three, but then did I go left or right any? I actually didn't. I cannot have a number and have it divided by zero. That's why it makes it undefined. Okay. Um, now, how do I, how to identify the slope when given two points now? So your first step, you're going to label the points as x1, y1, and your other point as x2, y2. The second step, you're going to plug in values into the slope formula for the corresponding variables. So remember we just did the rise over run. That's because your values, your y-axis is the rise and your run is the x-axis. So please, please, please write these down. Okay, so these are your slope formulas. All right, and then the third step is you're going to simplify your fraction just like we have been. For our first example, our first step was to label the points x1, x, or x1, y1, x2, y2. So we have x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay, now my second step was to plug it in to that corresponding formula. So see I have y2 minus y1 and then x2 minus x1. Let's actually rewrite that formula just so I know what I'm actually plugging in. So we had y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You guys should have this memorized by now. So I labeled this 3 as a y2, so my 3 is going to go first. Then I had a y1, which was this one right here, minus 1. And then, so if I, since I started from this set of points first, I have to go back to this set of points for my denominator as well, just like the x2 minus my x1, okay? So um, now we have 3 minus 1 is 2, 4 minus 1 is 3. My last step is to simplify my fraction. I actually can't, so that is my slope. Okay, let's do another one. So x1, y1, always label your points first. That's how we know how to plug them in. m stands for your slope. You have your y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. And then we're now we're just going to plug in those values. So what did I label for my y2? A negative 2 minus my y1, which was the 4 divided by 10, which is my x2, and then negative 2 was my x1. Be careful because you have a negative minus 2, okay? Do not get rid of that negative just because there was a negative right there in that 2. So I have, these are the same signs, so I'm going to keep this sign and add, so negative 2 plus another negative 4 is a negative 6, and then I have a negative times a negative is actually positive, so 10 plus 2 is 12, I see that I actually can simplify this fraction because I know 6 goes into 6 one time, and I know that 6 goes into 12 two times. So I have my fraction of a negative one-half. Okay, last two examples, you guys, just to keep practicing these. Um, I want you to label x1, y1, x2, y2. And again, I have a 5, oh, sorry, let me write out my slope formula, m equals y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, and I'm actually just going to keep going. So y2, so I have my 5 minus my 8 
negative 7 minus a negative 7. 5 minus 8, they're opposite signs, so you're going to subtract and keep the higher sign. So that means you have a negative 3. A negative times a negative is a positive. You do not change this one to a, a positive because that one was not being multiplied by a, neg a negative. So now I have negative 7 plus 7. That's actually 0. So when I have negative 3 divided by 0, you are not allowed to divide a number by 0. So that is an undefined graph, an undefined slope. Then I have my x1, y1 again for my next example. Oops. Um, x2, y2. Go ahead and write m as your slope. y2 minus y1. x2 minus x1. And then we have our y2, which was 9, minus our y1, which was 9. And then we had our x2, which was 3, minus 5. 9 minus 9 is 0. And then 3 minus 5, opposite signs. You're going to subtract and keep the higher sign. This time we have 0 on the top. We are able to divide 0 by a number. So in this case, we actually have a slope of 0. All right, and that's it for today's notes.